welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. So today I thought I'd come on here and share with you the remaining books I had in my collection with completed pages in them um, that I've coloured since I started my colouring journey. And um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a mix, like a mix of illustration illustrators. Like I know I've done, you know, um, videos on specific artists like or series of books like Hannah Carlson, Clara Markova, Maria Trolle, Rita Ber Berman, and then I've done the mythographic series. Um, I've done my Japanese illustrator books. And so these are just sort of, yeah, a little mix now <laughs> remaining. And I thought I'd just come on here and share them with you. And um, some of them are really early pages. So if you remember, um, I forgot to mention Kirby, but if you remember my colouring uh, journey started with Kirby Roseanne's books. Now, the first one I ever got was back again in 2015, 2016, and that was Animorphia by Kirby Roseanne's. And then my actual colouring journey started in um, 2020, May 2020 with uh, Worlds Within Worlds by Kirby Rosans. Now, between the 2015, 2016 and 2020, colouring didn't really stick. I had a couple of books here and there and um, I would usually only colour when I went on holiday, um, you know, if I'm sitting by the pool or something and I'd colour a little bit or during Christmas time um, when we had some days off and there was no nothing else really going on. And so I only had, between 2015, 2016 and 2020, I had Animorphia by Kirby Rosans and these two books um, by Lizzie Mary Cullen. So I had The Magical City and The Magical Christmas. So these books have very early colourings in them. Um, and some of the other books I'm going to show you today, I acquired literally um, at the beginning of my colouring journey in 2020. So lot there are a few early pages um pages i'm not very happy with um and then there's some you know newer pages a little bit later on but yeah i thought i'd just come on here and share them with you so let's start with the earlier books so the first book of lizzie mary cullens i bought after i got kirby's animorphia was the magical city now like a lot of people the thing that got me attracted to this book was Peter Hewitt. Um, her colouring in this book was stunning and her tutorials in this book was amazing. And so that's what um, got me attracted to this book. And the page that uh, she coloured or that I followed of hers, which I think a lot of people have probably seen this video, is this page here. Um, and I can't remember when this was. I won't, I, I haven't even signed it. Um, so it was earlier than, I don't know, maybe 2016, 2017, sometime around then. Um, and so, yeah, very early page, but I, I quite like it um, because I like the colors that Peter Hewitt used. I try to follow them. Now she uses, um, Ink tents, Derwent ink tents in her books. I don't own those, but I did have my Faber Castell Arbor Dura pencils, and so I tried to just sort of see what colors she was using and try and see if I could pick out colors that would work from my pencils. And I think at that time I only had the 48 set of um, Faber Castell Arbor Dura pencils, and that's what I used on this page. But I absolutely loved coloring this page um, with Peter Hewitt. Her tutorials her explanation um explanations of how to do coloring or you know she would explain about light and how to make things look cylindrical i still remember and there's a lot of tips just from this page that i picked up from her video and that has i would say has sort of shaped my coloring because there's so many things she explained on this video in her tutorials that i've been able to then work on myself and just develop and sort of create my own colouring style. But I remember learning a lot from her on this video. So I'll always love this page. Um, but yeah, you can tell I'm still learning. I, I wasn't very confident with my Albrecht Dura pencils. 
they're quite um, a little bit dull. Um, I could, I think nowadays I would be able to do a little bit of a more vibrant um, effect. However, I only use the pencils activated on this page. I didn't go over with the pencils dry, which is what I usually do these days. But anyway, so that's my first ever page in this book. I won't remember the rest of the pages in order, but I'll just show you them. So I've done these two pages. Now, all my work in these particular, in Lizzie Mary Collins books are with my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils. And I just use the pencils activated actually with water. And I don't usually, yeah, I don't go over with the pencils dry. Um, so yeah, there's, I, I, other than the Albrecht Dura pencils activated with water, I don't usually use that much more. Maybe some Poscas here and there. I've used a little bit of metallic there, but that's all I tend to use in these books. I say I tend to use, but I haven't coloured in these books for such a long time. Um, so yeah, then we have this one. Again, same uh, Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils, just with activated with water. I feel like I've gone over in on the sky with pencil a little bit. And then I have these two. Now these I must have, um, now this is, like I said, sort of before I started my coloring journey, before I started Instagram, I feel like this particular page, looking at the colors I had followed, I think it was, um, is it Katrine from Always Coloring? She had done this page and I, don't think she, there was a tutorial on it, but maybe I saw her completed page or I saw it on Pinterest or something like that. I didn't have Instagram yet. Um, so it must have been something like that. And I, you know, got the color, the inspiration for the colors from there. And even when I look at this, I don't think this that early in my coloring journey, I would have come up with that color palette. It's, um, it's a nice color palette, but I think I would have seen something on Pinterest or something. Now, Sadly, I won't have noted down who gave me that inspiration, where I got the inspiration from, because, again, I never thought I'd be on Instagram or, or YouTube for that matter. And because of that, I haven't noted it down, which is it's quite sad. But I can all I can say is it, that can't have been my my choice. I would have got inspiration from someone else. Um, then I've done this page. Same materials. I did quite enjoy colouring in these books, but now that I've got so many different, I've tried out so many different um, illustrations, uh, illustrators, artworks, I, I find it really hard. I find these books quite intimidating now to colour, which is really funny because I coloured in these books when I was a complete beginner, when I wasn't really serious about colouring, I was just colouring for fun. And I was able to do it. But now when I look at these pages, I get a bit lost. I don't know how to colour these pages. You can see my this work is very, very early. There's like no contrast in my colours here. I remember trying to look up. I was really proud of this building here. I remember trying to research what the buildings were, um, trying to see if I could use colours to sort of a little bit more realistic, just to try and uh, make some of the buildings look more traditional. Um, but yeah, I can see that there's not much contrast in some of these colours I've used. But yeah, I, I remember I really enjoyed colouring in this book, but now I find it really hard, which is surprising, isn't it? Especially after I've done so many different, so many pages now, and I've learned my materials. I've learned how to use my pencils, my markers, like my Tombow Jewel brush pens, and I use other materials like Distress Inks and soft pastels and you think the confidence would be there to color in a book I colored as a beginner but I'm actually very intimidated I don't know what to do with a page like that now um yeah it was a very early page I haven't even signed it basically I just need a Peter Hewitt to come back and start coloring in this book again and maybe that will give me the inspiration to color um the pages in this book again um, yeah, I like that, but I feel like I, I love how I've done this and I think that would have been my own, 
but I feel like I must have got some inspiration for the sky because it's very rare for me to combine colors like yellow, red, pink and purple together um, in, in my style of coloring nowadays. So I must have got some inspiration from someone's um, page for that. But yeah, I like that I've been using my, in this book, I've used my Arbitura pencils activated with water and not gone over with the pencils dry. I like the effect. I really hope I can try and get back into this book again, actually. Oh yeah, this is a page I'd started a little bit later in my colouring journey. And I think this is going to be a forever whip because I, like I said, I'm finding it really hard to colour this um, style of illustrations now. Um, so I sort of started this. I don't, I don't even know when, but it's going to be a forever whip. Um, I've written some shades down, so maybe I'll come back to it. I don't know. But whenever I look at it, I feel like, no, I'm never going to colour this again. But we'll see. That's St. Basil's Cathedral. And I think I looked up the, the, or the actual um, building the cathedral to try and get the colours um, a bit more realistic. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I shouldn't do it realistic. Maybe I should just go crazy with colours like some of those other pages where the colours are so bright. But yeah, I think I've never really shown you guys any whips because I don't usually have any whips. But um, I feel like this is going to be a forever whip. One of my only whips <laughs> that's going to remain like that but anyways that's a uh, magical city by lizzie mary cullen then the second book i have by lizzie mary cullen is the magical christmas i got this a bit later than the last one i think i got it as a christmas gift from my husband i can't remember what year i got it in but um yeah uh i'll show you this page first this is one of the newer pages actually well when i say newer it's december 2020 so not very new but i've followed I think I followed a tutorial by Lucy Just Adds Colour. Yeah, she did this page and I'd coloured in this page previously, like before my, the colouring stuck, like I said, so before 2020. Um, in this book, I had been colouring during Christmas time only. Um, but then I kept it away and I, I, I like I said, I didn't know how to colour this, um, this style of illustrations anymore. But then I had um, seen... Lucy just adds colour, colour this page and she used black widow pencil. So I think that's what I've used here, definitely for the for these greens. So I followed her on doing the background. Um, and I think looking at the colours, that doesn't look like my Faber Castell colours. So I think I must have used the uh, black widow pencils for the whole page, like Lucy. Um, so yeah, thanks to her. I coloured a page in it after so long. <laughs> yeah, so this page I'd done in Jan 2019. So maybe I got this book for uh, Christmas of 2018. So <laughs> you can see this is very early work. I had no, I, I didn't worry about the colours I was putting down. I used my favourite Castell Arbitura pencils here, activated with water and that's it. Um, I didn't worry about where the whether certain colors go together or not I just colored um, freely um, I had no idea about color theory you know the color wheel nothing like that I just colored um, so yeah very early work <clears throat> and then this one um, I think this one I definitely followed no not followed I got um inspiration for me a picture i saw on pinterest or something like that um so yeah this one is definitely not mine my own work because yeah at that time when was this december 2018 so that's when i got the book um i wouldn't have known about light reflections and things like that and i seem to have tried something there i used my faber castell arbic dura pencils um activated with water for these um and some posca it looks like um but yeah i think definitely followed i got inspiration from someone someone's work for this page i wouldn't have been able to come up with that at that point in coloring oh yeah this one this is april 2020 
So this is before my coloring journey officially started. April, May. Yeah, I would have started in May. And so, like I said, I only had the three books. So Lizzie Mary Collins, two books and Animorphia until May 2020. So this was probably, I had probably started it in Christmas of um, 2019 and I didn't finish it till April uh, 2020. Um, and then I must have started looking for, and that, that's when I then um, found that there were so many other coloring books out there and I got into the hobby. But I found out, found that out because I think I YouTubed, I searched on YouTube for um, coloring or something because I'm very sure I got inspiration from coloring with Alina for this page. Now, whether I have used her entire color palette for these two pages or not, I cannot remember. But a lot of it is from her. I don't think she used up, she definitely didn't use Albert Dura pencils, but I did, um, activated with water. And, uh, but I must have got her color um, choices and everything for the background and for a lot of the colors, I would say like the chair and things like that and how to do the shadowing and things, because I wouldn't have known that. Um, so yeah, I remember I think she's done this page. Now, whether she did a tutorial on it or I just, again, saw her completed pages and I worked from that and got, you know, tried to mimic what she was doing in terms of shadowing and highlights and things like that, I can't remember. But I know I got the inspiration from her for this double spread, which took me so many months to finish. Um, and then, yeah, then I did this. This is after my actual coloring journey officially started so this was December 2020 that's my own work now um not so keen on the background I think I used distressing for the background um and I used my um Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing a lot of the elements laying out the colors and then I went over with the pencils dry um Albert Dura pencils dry I think I did the background swirls with my Albrecht Dura pencils activated with water and then I just have some Fosca pen and that's it. And that's the last page I've done, probably the um, newest page I've done in this book. So December 2020, it's been a year, oh, two years already and I haven't coloured in it. So there we go. That's The Magical Christmas by Lizzie Mary Collin. Then some more earlier pages. Now... Like I said, my colouring journey started in May 2020 and of course I was on YouTube seeing what people are colouring and seeing what books are popular and of course Hannah Lynn was very popular and so I bought one of her books. Um, I'm not, this is the only book I have by Hannah Lynn and I'm not too keen on the artwork. First of all, I'm not I don't gravitate towards doing pages which are just portraits, first of all. Um, it's very rare that I'll feel like colouring a portrait and that's it, without much else happening on the page. Um, so I think that's one thing. It's not just, it's not the art. But then I think I found the line art too thick for me. Um, I think nowadays I'd be able to work with it, but I haven't managed to get back to colouring a Hannah Lynn for quite a while. But anyway, so this is quite an early work. I got this book literally in my first month of colouring in 2020. I've used Tombow Jewel brush pens for, not for basing, I've actually coloured with the Tombow Jewel brush pens. Um, so I've tried to just put down a base and then use the Tombow Jewel brush pens to actually do the shadows like you would with the um, alcohol mar markers, but it doesn't work as well. For the hair, I've based with Tombow Jewel brush pens, but then I've gone over with pencils and I feel like I might have used Black Widows there. And same thing, I've just done basing with Tombow Jewel brush pens and in certain areas gone over with pencil. The skin is just pencil. That's one thing I struggle with. I don't know what to do with the noses um, for the girls that Hannah Lynn draws. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Posca pen, that's it. And then I have this. I, I kept trying to colour Hannah Lynn's um, girls uh, to see if I liked it because this was all the way in 2021. So that's like, what, six months or so later. 
Um, and I think I've improved. Um, but yeah, so I did the background in soft pastels. And then I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing a lot of like the hair, the dress, the socks. So a lot of the elements, even the balloons. And then I went over with the pencils dry. I used Posca white pen. I used, is it uh, glitter gel pens for the rings? Yeah, I didn't know what to do with them. And for the hearts. Um, yeah, quite simple. I really enjoy doing it, but I don't gravitate towards these these illustrations. This is quite an early one again, September 2020. Like I said, I didn't know what to do with the nose. And um, yeah, that's what happened on this page. Don't like it. Definitely never doing that again to any of the girls. Um, but yeah, I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing. This time I started using a little bit of pencil to go over the top. Um, that's the other thing, because the paper is Amazon paper. And I was so early in my coloring journey I didn't know how to work with the paper I didn't know at that time that for me paper sort of matters and the how I enjoy the process of coloring um so yeah I remember struggling a little bit with the paper as well especially when I was trying to do layers for the skin at that time I didn't even know how to do skin I don't yeah she just looks she does not look Poor girl, basically, look at the skin tone I've used. Um, but yeah, I've used Tombow Joe brush pens for basing even the hair and everything else and then just go over certain areas with pencils. A little bit of Posca white pen and that's about it. But yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know how to color Hanalyn's women, basically. Then this was in April 2021, so a bit later. And I think, yeah, I, this is a little bit nicer. But I think I struggle, definitely struggle with the thick line art. Um, but yeah, I like this page. Um, yeah, again, Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing, Faber Castell Albert Dura pencils for uh, giving it a bit of extra shading. I've used soft pastels for the background, some Posca white pen, and that's it. I like how the denim looks in that. And then, and I also think I get quite bored doing hair. So that's why in a lot of these pages, I've used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing and then I go over with the pencils. I don't have alcohol markers, so that's why I don't use alcohol markers. And I know it's a one-sided book. Um, and then I have this page. I think I was quite happy with this page. I think with the colors I'd chosen and stuff, I really enjoyed. I'd used my Faber Castell Albert Dura pencils activated with water and then colored over the top, which is why the color looks so intense for the sky. I really like that. Um, this was quite early in my colouring, so November 2020, so I still wasn't really confident with using Posca pen for like outlining and stuff like that. That's why the snow is not outlined or the, um, even the, 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 the yeah, I've done the dots with Posca white pen, but usually now I do sprinkling with uh, Windsor and Newton white ink instead. Um, but yeah. I like this one a bit better. I did try to put a bit of a nose there and that looks a bit <laughs> a bit more successful than the last one that I attempted it on. But yeah, and then this is the last Hannah Lynn page I've done. I like this one. I like that I haven't really done a background. I don't think it needed it. I stuck some stickers. Oh yeah, that must have been a hashtag on Instagram where add something to your pages. So like stickers or something. And so I'd added a few stickers onto this um, page. Um... And yeah, again, Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing, pencils over the top for giving the shading. And that's it. I like this one, actually. Again, I like the denim. All right, and that's Hannah Lynn's Mermaid, oh, I forgot to say, Mermaids, Fairies and Other Girls of Whimsy. The reason I bought this book is I know that her other books have doubles. I'm not very keen on double pages. Um, I don't know how about I feel about them because I'd never color a page again. Um, so that's why I got this one, which had the 50 different pages in them. All right. Then this is another very early book I got again in my first month of coloring, a uh, nice little time for, and I think that lots of people in their, um, videos were showing the books by Tanya Bogema, and I looked at loads of videos and I chose two books that I got of hers. I do like her artwork. Again, I wasn't sure about what different papers were available at the time. 
And so these three books, so Hannah Lynn and two, the two books I had by Tanya Bogema were the only Amazon books I had until, I think, it's, was it this year? Yeah, this year. Um, when I started the YouTube channel is when I tried Christine Karen's, um, Christine Karen's art and I, I, I got her book, but the Amazon paper in that is a little bit better. But yeah, these are the only other three Amazon books I've had for all this time. Um, because I, I realized that I wasn't really enjoying the process of coloring, but that might have been because I wasn't very confident with using my materials yet because recently I've colored in Nice Little Town 6 by Tanya Bogema and I've done some pages I'm really happy with. So maybe I just needed time to learn my pencils, how I use them, how to make them work on different kinds of paper. And I've started learning that. And now I think I can color a bit better in the Amazon paper. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this is Nice Little Town 4, obviously just playing around with my Tombow Jewel brush pens. Um, and there, so you can tell how early this was. This was literally my first month. I started this book in May 2020. That's when I started colouring, I would say, officially when it stuck. Um, at that time, I would colour in order. So I'd started with the first page. Um, and this is the page I did. I'm sure I must have got inspiration from somewhere on how to colour this page because of all the shadowing. I wouldn't have known how to do that on my own yet. I use soft pastels for the background and my pencils for the foreground. You can see my pencils are not as vibrant as they are these days in some of my pages. So I was obviously still learning how to use my pencils. But yeah, that's that page. And on this page, I use my Tombow Jewel brush pens. You can see how vibrant it is. And then my pencils um, over the top in certain areas. I don't know what I was thinking. Again, with the colours, I didn't really have an idea of how to, uh, what colours to combine together to get the right kind of shadowing I want, um, shading I want. I still seem to use this colour combination a lot. I liked that. Um, the background, I use my Faber Castell Arbor Dura pencils, activated with water. And also for the grass here. And that's it. I definitely used Tombow Jewel brush pens for the blue and the orange areas. And then went over with a pencil dry and some Posca white pen. Then I started skipping pages. <laughs> so this page, can I show it to you? Sort of. Um, so yeah, when I did this, I was actually quite happy with it. Now when I look at it, I remember being really proud of my blue um, cabinets and drawers and stuff. But now when I look at it, I'm just like, hmm, um, don't know what I was thinking. But I remember doing Tombow Jewel brush pens for the basing. And then went over with my pencils dry. I added that checkered floor there. I used soft pastels for the outside. Um, I won't remember much else, but yeah, I must have used a combination of my Tombow Jewel brush pens and my Harbour Jewel pencils, but dry on that particular page. This one, I think I remember getting inspiration from a picture I must have seen on Pinterest or yeah, on Pinterest. Um, because I didn't have Instagram at that time. And I must have seen someone do a lot of pinks and stuff. Because again, I wouldn't have come up with that colour combination. And been so limited with my colours. I would have just been very free with colours. And just used whatever colours I wanted. Like that page. Um, so yeah. That one I definitely got inspiration from someone. Again, I'm not sure who. Sadly, I didn't note it down. Nowadays, I make sure I, I know where I get my inspiration from. If I do use um, someone's work but yeah I like that one but again you can see my pencils are not as vibrant as normal I think I've used my pencils activated with water as well but not going over with the pencils dry and I think this is the last page I've done in this book um, here I'm experimenting a bit more I've used my soft pastels but I've tried to do shading um, to sort of give a gradient of colors for the sky I've tried to add grass effect for the grass um, and I've just used pencil it looks like maybe activated with water and then gone over with the pencils with the sh shading and stuff again I feel like I must have got inspiration for the colors from somewhere especially for the the roof and like the curtains and stuff because again my colors look so limited um, which I think at that time wouldn't have been the case 
But yeah, this is where I started learning that when I use soft pastels over like my Tombow Jewel brush pens and stuff, that the, the, the obviously the pens don't resist to the color, so it dulls the effect of the colors. Um, so yeah, that's where I learned that. Oh, and these bubbles, I think, I must have learned from Peter Hewitt. I think she might have a tutorial video on how to do uh, bubbles or something for backgrounds. And I think basically she explains using a white pencil to do your bubble, put it all down. And then when you go over with the soft pastels, pencils resist the, the, the a soft pastel from going over it. And then you can see the bubbles shine through basically. So that's how I did the bubbles for that. Um, and that's how I learned that Tombow Joe brush pens don't resist the soft pastels. And yeah, that's it really. Oh yeah, this book. I really like this book, but at, cert at a certain point in the book, I feel like the art style changes. Like the, the work gets a bit, I don't know, it looks a bit different to her other work, like this one especially. Like it just looks a little bit of a different drawing style. This one this one definitely it just looks a little bit different i don't like these last few pages um they feel so tiny and busy it just looks a bit different to her first few pages and in the next book nice little turn so i don't know uh why that's the case but yeah that's what i found about this uh book at the end but yeah there we go so that was nice little time four and then i have nice little time six now i've done a bit more work in this book more recently but yeah, that's me just, oh yeah, this, I'd put, I think I'd put down gesso or something and try to sandpaper it, trying to learn, because I think a lot of people do that, don't they? I must have seen it on YouTube and I wanted to try and use my Tombow Jewel brush pens to um, blend directly on the paper because not all paper can do that. Definitely Amazon paper will not do that for you. And so I tried to use the gesso there. Um, but yes, it's very rough for the Tombow Jewel brush pens. Do not do that. You'll kill your pens. Um, so yeah, then I have this page again quite early. I've used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing and um, pencils over the top this time. I've used soft pastels for the background, for the sky and the grass. Um, certain areas of, of Tombow Jewel brush pen I haven't gone over with the pencils. And yeah, that's it. And then this is again very early work. This I didn't use any Tombow Joe brush pens. I tried, I don't know why I tried to do this on an Amazon. But again, I didn't know Amazon paper. This is May 2020 again. So probably like the second page I colored in, a, in an Amazon book. And I tried to do a background with pencils. I will never do that again in an Amazon paper book. But um and I was trying to figure out bokeh background. I think that was way too early in my coloring journey to attempt to do that. And I've never attempted it again, probably because I failed mis miserably at that. Um, yeah, I like how I'm trying to do my shadowing there. But yeah, I've just used my pencils basically. Either activated a little bit and then gone over with the pencils dry. But I think the it's not that vibrant, so I must have just used pencils dry. Yeah. This is a later work now. So I'm start, I am started to learn how my pencils work, how to work with this paper. This is May 2021, so a year after I'd started my coloring journey. And I absolutely love this page. And I've done a few more pages because I think this was one of the, I think some of the other newer pages come after this one. So I really liked the results. I still use, I just use soft pastels for the background. So I kept that simple. I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing certain elements, large elements especially, to put down that base and then go over with my pencils um, to give the, the shading. Um, even I remember doing that for the macaroons and stuff. And then even for the leaves, all of that. So I used my Tombow Jewel brush pens either directly to the paper. In certain areas, I would have used it on the Caran d'Ache palette and then painted it on with a water brush and then used my pencils dry over the top. So I definitely remember enjoying colouring this page. So that was May 2021. Oh gosh. Yeah, okay, this one. 
So I was getting frustrated with the paper. This is December 2020, so a few months into my colouring and I was still working. I didn't have that many books yet and I was still working in exams and paper books and I hadn't figured out the paper. I tried being, using, you know, Tombow Jewel brush pens, pen, pencil over the top. I can see that on the leaves and everything. And then I just got fed up of this page, working with this paper. I was not happy. I should have just left it. But then I decided to go and do soft pastel background with black and... I'd used like my Faber Castell, I think, um, Albert Dura pencils uh, activated with water so it doesn't resist um, soft pastels in that situation if you haven't used the pencils dry over top and so the, the soft pastels went on that and it's dulled so many other areas because of my Tombow Dura brush pens um, because certain areas I wouldn't colour over with pencils so I'd leave the highlight um, on a particular element as the Tombow Jewel brush pen. So everything picked up the soft pastels. And I think I was just irritated with this page. I remember being really annoyed by the end of it. Um, but yeah, there we go. Don't use soft pastels unless you, at the end of a page, unless you've used pencils to color that page. That's the only thing that will resist the soft pastels. Otherwise, do your soft pastel work first, erase the bits you don't want, spray fixative, and then colour your page. <laughs> I've learned that. All right, this is quite an early page as well. Um, use my, yeah, just I think pretty much just my Faber Castell Albert Dura pencils, although there it looks like maybe I used my Tombow Dura brush pens. But um, I used the Faber Castell activated with water and then I tried to go over and do shading. I remember being quite proud of this page with my wood effect. Obviously, now when I look at it, um, yeah it doesn't look all that great but anyways um i don't know why i did my skylight color but i used my faber castell albrick duro pencils activated with water for that obviously trying to put in some clouds um and yeah that was my june 2020 so very early again okay this is probably the most recent page i've colored in this book like i said I have started to learn how to work with the paper and with the materials that I use. I've learned how to use them and um, so I really enjoy, um, I really enjoyed colouring this page. I think I used soft pastels for the background. I used, my, um, I think I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for certain elements on this page and um, went over with the pencils dry and in certain areas like the building I activated the pencils with water and then went over with the pencils dry and I did a lot of outlining with my Thule Art paint pens um, and I love that I blocked out all those black lines especially for the building I think that looks really nice and for the rocks down here um, yeah and then I used a lot of think Posca pen yeah for those definitely for those uh, little flower sort of effects of dots I use Posca pens because I don't have bright colors in Thule Art um and what else I think that's it yeah really like how this page turned out actually and I really enjoyed coloring it the process I think I tried to add more bush so I think the bush that uh, Tanya Bogema had put in was just still there and then I tried to fill in a little bit more right till the end there with of the berries and and leaves so um yeah I think when I colored this page I really enjoyed it so this is the last one I've colored in this book so I think I will definitely be coming back to these books I think I've learned how to use my materials to give the effect the vibrant bold effect I like on these pages and just keep the background simple <laughs> All right, and this page as well, I quite enjoyed. So I did do this this year in February, so beginning of the year. Um, yeah, I really like how this page turned out. So I used Distress Inks for the ground down here. I used my Faber-Castell Albert Jura pencils activated with water to give the effect up there. And then I just colored over a little bit with the pencils. I used Tombow Jewel brush pens, I think, for basing a lot of elements like the leaves, like the books, just to lay out my colors like the wood uh sorry yeah i think the wood as well but also the door wood um i use faber castell albert Dura pencils activated with water for the picture um to make it look like a painting or attempt to look like a painting 
and yeah, I used the pencils dry for the rest of the page. I used um, Posca pen, and that's it. Really enjoyed colouring this page too. So I've done three successful pages in these nice little time books, in the Amazon books, so I'd be happy to try and colour in them again. Not that one. <laughs> but yeah, so that's Tanya Bogamer's Nice Little Town 6. And I'm, I feel so tempted to get her some other books of hers, but then the paper puts me off. And I know I can print them. I can get her um, PDF versions and print it, but I don't have a decent printer. So I don't, I don't like doing printing of PDFs, but yeah. All right, so this is Denise Klett's Mermaids in Paradise. Again, a very early book. Lots of people were, by, were interested in these books. That's why I bought them from watching videos and seeing what people were sharing and suggesting. And I'm not very happy with this book either. So there were a few of these early buys that I wasn't too happy with. And after that, I think about my buys so much more before I buy a book. And I look through flip throughs and I look through them again and again until I know that majority of the more than... 80% I'd say of a book I would love to colour in, then I'd get those books. So yeah, I'm very picky now about my um, my bias, basically. But anyways, so this was again a very early page, July 2020. I tried to use my Faber-Castell Albertura pencils for the background. Definitely not very good at the blending, but I think I struggled with this paper for that. I'm not sure why. But, or maybe it was just that I didn't know how to use the pencils very well, especially for backgrounds at that time, because it was so early in my colouring. I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing pretty much everything. And then I used my pencils all the top in certain areas. Again, I, the reason I struggle in this uh, book, I'm not too keen on this book, I think, again, is the line art. It's very thick line art for me. The paper is decent, it's thick. But um, I, I struggle with the line art being so thick. So Hannah Lynn's book and this book I do struggle with. All right. So this page, I think I was just playing around with my Tombow Jewel brush pens. So just messing around, really. Um, yeah, I pretty much just use Tombow Jewel brush pens everywhere. Probably from a palette um, with a water brush in certain areas, direct to the paper in certain areas, the more vibrant areas, and that's it. I think I tried to do a sprinkling effect with them. Uh, probably not very successful, but yeah. That's all I've done on that page. Didn't know how to tackle these pages again. Here I obviously started to learn how to use my Arbitura pencils a bit better. So what was that? February 2021. So yeah, a little bit um, later in my colouring journey. Um, so I've used my Faber-Castell Arbitura pencils for the background, activated with water. More successful. Um, I've used Tombow Jewel brush pens for certain areas for basing. Like the yellow and the pink hair and the wood and the red there. And then I've gone over with the pencils dry. Posca white pen. And that's it really. I, wasn't, I was quite happy with this page actually. Compared to my earlier pages. This one again. Very early page. July 2020. I just used my Tombow Jewel brush pens on this page. Um, a lot of it was from a palette and trying to do shading with them, which I quite like, actually. But I don't get that bold effect I get with pencils. So that's why I like to go over with pencils. But yeah, I did try to do some shading with them. Um, the background as well, it looks like I attempted to use the Tombow Jewel brush pens to do that with off the palette because it looks quite um, speckled rather than my pen, Albert Dura pencils. So basically pretty much everything here. I um, for, the, for the treasure, I've used pencil over top for sure, but everything else is just the Tombow Jewel brush pens. Whether it's direct to the paper, like for the hair, and I've tried to use darker shades of the red to give that effect, um, or off a palette for the more subtle colors. But yeah, very early work. It's really thick paper, but it goes through the papers. Unless, again, I didn't know how to use my uh, Tombow Jewel brush pens very well at that time. Here, yeah, I think similar thing. Uh, not sure why I was so into my Tombow Jewel brush pens for this book. But yeah, I've used it for the background off a palette. That's why it's so, again, speckled. I've used it for the off a palette for the sand. And I've done direct to the paper for the seaweed trying to give shadowing. I've used it on the mermaid tail, but I've used some pencil. 
I know I have, and I've just shaded with the Tombow Jaw Brush Pens with that as well, the hair, everything. Skin is in pencils, and the bottles are with pencils. Yeah, and I think I remember doing this for a hashtag uh, on Instagram. Would I have been on Instagram by then? Yeah, August 2020. Um, I think it was something to do with bottles. So I chose this page, which had loads of bottles. Um, yeah, this I remember doing this page. I actually was quite happy with this page. Um, I, I think I remember trying out this skin. Obviously, it was so early again in my colouring. I didn't know how to do skin very well. I have, hadn't really experimented that much, but I like how the skin came out a little bit there. I didn't do a background because I think there was a colour along on Instagram um, for a no no background colour along. So I didn't do a background for this page. And I like, I think I used my Faber Castell Arbor Duro pencils activated with water. And then I went over the top with the pencils dry. Um, again, simple page, but I quite like the colours I've chosen for this page. It works quite well and yeah that's it early in my coloring journey i seemed to have a lot more time i used to do so many color alongs tried to get through so many hashtags but nowadays i barely do like four or five pages a month now but anyways this page again very early in my coloring i think i've just used tombow jaw brush pens for pretty much everything I'm trying to see if i used any pencils no i think i was just trying to use my, I mean, my Tombow Jewel brush pen, some, some areas direct to the paper, some areas trying to um, lay down colour, some areas like here, I've used the tip to tip method to give that gradient. Um, but yeah, I just use the pens. And I, this is, you know, when I was experimenting in these first few months of colouring with my pencils and my markers, that's all I still use these days. I started to realize that I didn't like just the marker effect and that's how I learned that I like using the markers a lot but I like going over with the pencils and getting um, the effects I get nowadays like on this page for example I really enjoyed doing this page now this page was thanks to you guys that I came back to this book because this was done for Mermaid this year. I think I'd given some choices on the community tab on YouTube and you guys, this page won, you guys chose this page and I was like, okay, this gives me that inspiration, that push I need to try and colour in this book again, see if I can use my skills now to produce something I like because my other pages I am not that happy with. They were very early pages and you can see that I was just trying to experiment and trying to learn how to use my materials. So when I came and coloured this page this year, I'm so happy with it. Um, so I used soft pastels for the background. You can see I'm a little bit more confident with the soft pastels. I'm combining colours to give a better, more deep effect with the soft pastels. So I like that. I used, I don't know if I remember everything actually. Um, I definitely uh, based with the, the Tombow Jaw brush pens for the leaves. And I think for these things here. I'm not sure what they are. Coral, I'm not sure. But yeah, I definitely based those with the Tombow Jaw brush pens. I can't remember about that. Basically the video, a full colour along on this page is available on the channel. You can check it out. I don't know why I can't seem to. I remember my earlier pages and this one is my latest page and I can't remember what I did. But I know I used the Tombow Jaw brush pens for basing all of this. And then I used my pencils over top uh, to give this deeper shading effects um i use my posca pen i use glitter gel pens i use um you can see the bubbles there shining and yeah i think i'm quite happy with this page i love how the sand came out usually i would have done just yellow sand i like that i used green in there um so yeah it looks like a children's picture book or something like that um but i i really like how this page turned out so thanks to you guys i colored in this book um, again after so long and produce something I like so hopefully it will encourage me one day to get back to this book again but I don't tend to pull it out that much I think it's the line art but there we go so that's Denise Clett's Mermaids in Paradise and then this is again a buy very early in my colouring journey because it was so popular um, I like Emily Lydell Hall Oberg sorry Fairy Tales by Emily Lydell Oberg I like her work, but I think I prefer her work in, what's the book called? Um, you know, the hardback book, 
it's it's going off my mind oh is it cyborg cygna yeah i think that's the one um which is not available now and i think i prefer the artwork in that one but of course that's not available but i tried this book out because everyone was very into this book when i first started or i'd see it i'd seen it on so many channels so i said okay i'll get this book so you can see how different the art the art work or illustrators i've chosen at the beginning of my journey and that's how i started to learn what i liked um what do you call it coloring so anyway so this is again you'll see a book of um experimenting i use my tombow jewel brush pens here for the background for um basing and i started using pencils over top to try it out that's august 2020 so very early but yeah you can see my highlights my contrast between my highlights and my shadows are not that great but i'm still learning and then i've done these pages again quite early especially this one um used faber castell albert Dura pencils for the background still not that confident for using them in backgrounds i was still learning um so i activated with water for there and i used tombow jewel brush pens for basing a lot of the elements and then i went over with the pencils dry i remember enjoy doing that page and being proud of this page when i finished it this page again i used tombow jewel brush pens for a lot this background here is black widows um I can tell it's not the same blues as I had in my Faber-Castell. I Actually, all of this, these colours are definitely not from the Faber-Castell. So I think this was our Brook Jura pencils I used, even my greys. Yeah, so I used Faber-Castell, I mean, Black Widow pencils for this page. Posca white pen. And I may have used the Atombo Jewel brush pens for basing um, quite a few of the elements, like the blues, like the purple hair and this stuff there. Uh, stuff? Clothing, sorry. Um, and then, yeah, went over with the Black Widow pencils in that case. But I find it really hard with Black Widow pencils. I don't think I have the deep colours that I I get or the very dark colours that I get in my Faber-Castell. Like, look at these blues are so dark. I don't have those to create the shadowing that I like to create. So that's why I struggle with my Black Widow pencils. And I find that the Black Widow pencils are quite thin compared to my Faber-Castell. I've got so used to the chunky, well, they're not very chunky, but they are thicker than certain pencils, the Faber-Castell Albrecht Jura pencils. And so I find it really hurts my hands when I'm using the Black Widows because I find them thin for me now that I'm used to my Albrecht Juras. I sound so fussy. <laughs> um, okay, then we have this page. I remember this page being really popular on Instagram for... I just started Instagram like a couple of months before this page. Um, I did this page for my birthday. My birthday is in November. And I remember colouring this page for that. And I, for the number of likes I used to get at that time, I got a lot for this page. And I wasn't sure why. I do enjoy, I, I do remember enjoying colouring this page. But yeah, I used my favourite Castell Albedura pencils activated with water for the background. And I remember trying to do the swirls with the Posca pen and all for the cupcakes and yeah i feel like i've used the black widows for the blue possibly for the purple on the birds and i've used my albert Jura pencils for the rest and i think i might have based certain elements like the flags with my tombow jewel brush pens the strawberries and then gone over with the pencils the paper in this book is amazing i can say that but i struggle with the artwork because i think there's a lot of I don't know if it, you would call this Zendu usually, but all these lines that are everywhere, I don't know what to do with them. I know you just, you know, people say just colour over it, block it out. So pages like this are quite nice. I, obviously, I'd struggle with the background because I struggle with backgrounds, but I don't see all that line, you know, so many lines here and there. For example, on this one, is that a leaf? So the leaf has so many lines for me. The dragonfly wings have lines all over it so I, I struggle with that aspect of um emily lydell holberg's um art style see all the lines on the flowers i know i can color over them but i do struggle to see how i want to color them before i start a page um so yeah i do find a challenge in coloring in this book so i don't always gravitate towards this book but i've done this page here i remember doing a lot of it in just tombow jewel brush pens that's why it's so vibrant um, so the background I blacked out with a black Tombow Jewel brush pen and then I did 
laid out all my colours with Tombow Draw brush pens and then I went over with pencils dry. I feel like I've used Black Widows here again because I don't have the dark depth, you know, the shadows don't have those dark blues that I usually use. So I think I have used Black Widows here and the greens are not the usual greens I would use. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah, I remember trying to do something here. Did she have circle? Oh, no, here. <laughs> the armpits had, you know, dots on it. I didn't really like the idea of that. So I whited out. I used Posca white pen to block out those dots on her armpits and then colour her over. And a lot of her, I don't think this particular face has it, but a lot of her faces have those circles on them. Again, like this one here. I don't know what to do with that. I don't know how to colour those. So I struggle with those few aspects of her art style. And then we have this page. Again, I've gone a bit um, crazy with colours here. Where was this? September 2020. So quite early in my colouring journey still. I used my favourite Castell Arbrook Draw Pencils, activated with water for the background. Still learning to use them for backgrounds. It wasn't very easy to figure out the pencils with, for backgrounds. And then I think I've used Tombow Draw Brush Pens for basing a lot of elements. Like I remember basing the green and this. All of these elements that look so vibrant usually are based with Tombow Draw Brush Pens and then pencils over the top. As you can see, most of the time I use my same materials. It's very rare that I've attempted just to see, experiment with a couple of other sets of pencils I have, which is the Black Widow and Castle Arts. And I learned that I don't like how those work or I can't work. My style doesn't work with them. Like I find the Black Widow is very pastel tone, which is really lovely, but I like the bold colours, which I wasn't able to learn how to get with the Black Widows. So I always gravitate to my Faber Castell. Here I was obviously attempting to do something different. I think I remember liking it. Um, I used my Faber Castell Albert Dura pencils activated with water uh, to try and give a watercolour sort of effect look on the skull. And then I kept everything else grayscale with the pencils um, dry. In the background, it feels like I must have used Distress Ink or something for the background. And just Posca white pen, that's it. Again, quite early in my colouring journey, just experimenting, just learning what I like. Again, this is very early. I, this one I liked. I liked the colours I, I chose to use. Um, but again, I was still experimenting. So here I was experimenting again with Tombow Jewel Brush Pens. So I tried Tombow Jewel Brush Pens for the backgrounds. Don't think I'd do that again. It, it looked okay with the um, such a light colour. But if I was to do that with dark colours, I don't think it works very well. Um... But I used Tombow Draw Brush Pens for basing pretty much everything. And then I coloured with pencils. Uh, my Arbor Draw Pencils dry over the top. Again, very early in my colouring journey. So I was still experimenting, still learning everything. seeing, Still learning what I like, what results I like getting. So that's August 2020. And then this, I think... I feel like I did this for a colour along, but I won't remember what, what the hashtag was. Um, was it when I started Instagram? Yeah, September 2020. I don't remember what the colour along was, whether it was maybe something to do with a bird or was it to do with peacocks? I'm not sure. Basically, I remember enjoying doing this. I blacked out the background with my Tombow Jewel brush pen, my black Tombow Jewel brush pen. And I remember doing metallic, gold metallic gel pen dots on it. I used my Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing the feathers and then I went over with the pencils dry. Again, there's so many patterns I didn't know what to do. I know I just coloured over the top of them, but um, in this case, but in certain illustrations, I find it hard to see how to, uh, you know, to see what I want to do. And yeah, an early attempt at gold, I think. Mm, that's it really, Posca pen, some metallic pen. I liked how that turned out. I think it's the colour, the colours. And I guess that was where I'm starting to learn, like, limited palettes as well. Um, oh, yeah, this was definitely a colour along on Instagram. I remember October 2020. I remember doing this for, I think it was at Norma Colourings um, hashtag, where it must have been half pink, half orange hair or something like that. Um, that's why the hair is that colour, but it was so fun trying to figure that out, especially so early in your colouring journey where you're just experimenting and learning and it was nice trying that out. I've, I've uh, 
used a Posca white pen to block out those circles on the cheeks and color over. And I've used my Faber-Castell Arbor pencils. I think activate it with water for certain elements and then dry over the top. But yeah, and I remember adding the writing on this book and being proud of that. I remember being proud of that. But yeah. And then this is the last page I've done in this book. And I've been so happy with this page and how it's come out compared to all the earlier pages. So this I did in July 2021. And I used my Faber Castell Arbit Jura pencils for the background. I had learned how to use them now for backgrounds. I'd used Tombow Jura brush pens for basing all the leaves, the berries, the mushrooms, the sweater, the little suitcases. And then I went over with the pencils, my um, Faber Castell Arbit Jura pencils dry. And then I did Posca white pen and I did the sprinkling of Windsor and Newton ink, what I do nowadays. Um, and I really remember enjoying colouring this page and I absolutely loved the result. One of the only pages I'm actually proud of in this book because the other ones are all sort of experimenting. And so I'm so scared to do another page in this book in case I don't like it and it looks like my earlier work um, because I do struggle to see how I want to colour these pages. So yeah, I really liked how this page turned out and because of that, I've never come back to this book. Um, but yeah, so I'll leave you with uh, in that book with that that last page. So that was Fairy Tales by Emily Lydell Hall Allberg. Some more earlier pages um, from Colouring Heaven, Cutesy Special. This is the first Colouring Heaven I ever got. It was in that first year of colouring in 2020. I've done a few in this book. Um, so I'll do some Colouring Heavens now, basically. So I've used I've used eyeshadow in the background for here. I've used a stencil to do the snow with a glitter gel pen and I've used, as you can tell because it's so pastel to one, but I love it on this page, is the Black Widow pencils. I used a lot of Posca white pen. Um, but yeah, I really en remember enjoying this page and using the Black Widows here to get those colors, which I can't get with um, Faber Castell. This one I used, um, this was all done on the same year for Christmas, but that's because I only had this Christmas book and the other few books that I had at that time that I had acquired over the six months of coloring, I don't think any of them had Christmas pages or winter pages, not, or not many. I think maybe I had Hannah Carlson Seasons at that time, but um, this was the only other Christmas book I think I had. So I'd done quite a few pages on that same year. Anyways, again, I used eyeshadow for the background on this page. So I must have seen it on someone's YouTube channel that they use eyeshadow. And so that's what I did. And then I used stencils again with glitter gel pen to give those stars and presents in the background. And then I used my Faber-Castell Arbit Jura pencils activated with water. And then I went over with the pencils dry. I used a lot of Posca white pen to do the hair and the hat and things like that. And I really enjoyed that. And I think I used the, the pencils activated with water for the sack as well. Um, yeah, this was, um, this was last year, November 2021. Uh, really happy with this page. And I used just my, I think I used the Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing the scarves and the hats and for these um, blue and orange elements. And then I used my pencils for everything else. I um, used Posca white pen to outline all the snow and the snowmen. Um, I did the sprinkling with Windsor and Newton ink. And I used, I'm not sure if I added those um, snowflakes or whether they were already there, but I used glitter gel pen for that. I think those snowflakes were there and I just used uh, glitter gel pen to fill them up. I really like how the, this result came out. And I didn't do that much of a background. I think I just used my Faber Castell Arbor Jura pencils just to give it a little bit of a blue effect. Um, <laughs> this page was in December 2020. So the, the year I got this book, I thought I would work through every single page through the through um, like the advent calendar. Um, I don't think I liked the idea of doing that. I got a little bit bored. I stopped outlining them halfway through, but at least the page got done. So yeah, I find it really hard to do little illustrations. I think I like busy, big illustrations. So when it comes to little ones, I do find it a bit hard. 
this one's an early page again November 2020 so when I got the book basically um, I add, I remember adding the background myself. I think I used my Faber-Castell Arbitur pencils activated with water just to give it so it wasn't too vibrant. Um, the wood effect was there. I used the Faber-Castell Arbitur pencils activated with water for the carpet and for the clothing as well, it looks like, and for the sofa, but I went over with the pencils dry. Um, I remember being really proud of this page with the fur and stuff um, at the time. But yeah, I, I like this page. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'd go for the colours I, I chose on this page now, but yeah. And then I have this page I did again in 2020. Did the background with, I think with Distress Ink. Yeah, I did the background with Distress Ink. I did my pencil work. So I think I went over the leaves and stuff as well with the Distress Ink. And then I did the pencil work. Um, or no, I didn't. I think I did the distressing graft. I just used my Faber Castell but drew pencils, activated with water in certain areas, and then went over the top with the pencils dry. I love how the jeans have turned out here. And then I think I used the distressing um after at the end, and some metallic pen, some glitter, some Posca white pen to give the snow effect. Yeah, I was really happy with this page. I still like it. And I didn't think it needed too much of a background. This one, I did more of a background. And I think this one, I'm trying to remember. I think I did use Distress Ink for this, for the background. And then I used, it looks like I've used, for the fur, I've used my Faber-Castell Arbor Dura pencils. But the, yeah, I, I think I used my Faber-Castell Arbor Dura pencils for everything, actually. Really like her little boots. Um, yeah. I remember being happy with this and I think I used the stencils for the snowflakes with Posca pen did the dots with that so yeah happy with that I also did this one that same year it's got so much coloring done at that time um <laughs> definitely not possible nowadays I did the background with um I think with eyeshadow and then I used a stencil to erase out the circles with an electric eraser I used glitter gel pen for the stars I think I ed added those in with a stencil and then I just used my, it looks like I might just have used my pencils. And that's it. Or a little bit of uh, Tombow Draw brush pens for like the blue areas. But yeah, very cute. <laughs> I think this is the last page I've done in this book. I didn't manage to get around to it this year. Maybe there's a couple of, there's a couple of no, not non Christmassy looking pages that I could still do. So we'll see if I get a t chance. But yeah, I tried a Hannah Lynn again. Um, at that time, I was still doing Hannah Lynn. Um, again, I struggle with the dark line art, but I like how this turned out. I like how I tried to do this, the ice. Um, and yeah, my snow, this is one shade of snow I still use today. Um, and I think, yeah, this was for a colour along again, probably by Norma Colouring for rainbow hair, which is why the hair is that colour. I like trying to do her hashtags nowadays. Again, I'm struggling with time, but I used to do it every single month and it was such a good challenge. Some of them like the rainbow hair. I'd never done rainbow hair before. So it was really good challenges that she <laughs> gives us. Um, yeah. And that's the last page in Cutie Christmas Special by Colouring Heaven. And then the next Colouring Heaven book I have is Chibi. I never knew of Jashley. This is how I think I just must have seen a flip through and I really liked it. So this is the second um, Colouring Heaven I bought, actually. And I'm not subscribed to them. I just buy the, the books I, I like um, or an artist I want to try out, which may only be on Etsy and quite pricey. So I tend to try out the Colouring Heaven books if they do come out with them. Um, so yeah, this was by Jash Lee. And I quite like this book. I'm not into, I've never, never knew what Chibi was actually until I came across this, um, until I started colouring actually and came across this. But yeah, I've used on this page, I think again, I did it probably for a colour along with the green hair, green eyes or something like that. But um I used distressing for the background for the for the green part and the blue bit. I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing pretty much everything. So the mushrooms, the leaves here for the dress, the hair, um, the tree trunk, and then I went over with the pencils dry. Uh, 
I really liked this and I sprinkled with the Arteza metallic watercolor paints yeah I really enjoyed doing that page oh that's my paper still there this page I really enjoyed as well I used soft pastels for the background and I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing a few of the elements and then I used um, Black Widows on this one. No, not Black Widows. Yeah, Castle Art. Castle Art tends to bleed through the, the pink ones I found at that time when I used to use them. So I used paper, um, the Castle Arts on this page and I like the colours it gave because it, it looks a bit different to the colours I, I usually use. So it was nice actually having a different effect of the pinks and the purples and and the oranges so it just gave me gave me a little bit of a different look so yeah i remember enjoy doing this page using castle arts and a bit of tombow jewel brush pen actually and i used probably tombow jewel brush pen the black ones to outline certain things and tosca white pen oh this was the first page i did actually in this book i didn't know what chibi was i didn't know how to color chibi but yeah, this is the page I first did in this book. I used my paper castell Albrecht Dura pencils. I think dry for pretty much everything. Um, the background I did with soft pastels. I'm not sure why I did it black like that, but yeah. And I used some metallic pen for certain elements. And that's it. I remember being happy with it at that time, but then I prefer the ones I colored after this one. But yeah. And then the last one I have in this book is this witch here. And I used distressing for the background. I remember really taking my time trying to do the, the, the glass, the bottle, the jars. Um, and yeah, I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing a lot of elements like the frog and the little bunny there and the mushrooms and the pumpkin and I think the hair as well. And then I went over with my pencils dry for everything. I used a green I don't use very often to give that very luminous sort of green effect. Um, Posca white pen and a bit of glitter gel pen for like these dots and stuff. Yeah. And that's it. And there must have been a colour along for the skin or something which made me try out the green. And I quite like how it turned out uh, for a first time try. So yeah, I think that's why the skin I went for green. Green yeah all right and that's it so that's coloring have been chibi by josh lee and then also by josh lee because i really enjoyed that artwork of his i when this one came out i think this one came out after i got this book um fantasy princesses special and i've only done one page in this book and i really enjoyed the process of coloring this page um the background is with distressing i wanted to give it sort of an oldie look this was in september 2021 so yeah, a year into my colouring journey and I used the Arteza metallic watercolour paint for the sprinkling effect. I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing a lot of elements like the flowers, all the blue and red elements basically are based with that and the green leaves and then I went over with the pencils dry and I love how this page has turned out. The skin I can work on but at least I was able to get a bit of a darker skin tone which I like. Um, yeah. I really, really enjoyed colouring this page and I love the end result. I don't think it was very um, popular on Instagram, but I love, I loved colouring this page and I loved the result. The paper used to be better in um, colouring heaven in these first few editions that I bought. And nowadays they're very thin, but I haven't coloured in them yet. So I don't know how my pencils are going to work. I hope they're going to be good because the last couple of books I bought with the new paper, yeah, they're untouched books at the moment. So... I just hope the paper works because I, I do enjoy colouring and colouring heaven books or the previous older paper. But yeah, really enjoy this. And that's Fantasy Princesses Special by Josh Lee. And then I only have one page in this colouring heaven, my only other colouring heaven book that I've coloured in. Um, I don't have that many. But um, this is Mermaid Special by Anastasia Ellie Calderiba. And I got this book. I'm not so interested in colouring mermaids I don't gravitate towards them however I know her artwork or her books are very very expensive on Etsy so I've never thought to buy them and so I took the opportunity to try out colouring her artwork in um, 
the coloring heaven so i'm so glad it came out in coloring heavens and this is the only page i've colored because i'm very intimidated by her artwork it's so stunning but i find that it would be a real challenge to color but i'm so happy with how this turned out especially my stonework i like the effect it gives i can't remember what i used um i think i used soft pastels for the background water and then i used jumbo jewel brush pens for basing certain elements and then i used my pencils dry yeah i even based the stonework with my uh tombow jewel brush pens laid out all the colors for the coral and stuff and the leaves and everything gave a little bit of shading with pencil because it was so tiny so i know i've heard on other people's channels that anastasia ellie called Ariba's books are actually quite large books so it looks like obviously the illustrations would have been uh reduced in size to fit in a in an almost a four size basically book um so maybe that's why the elements look quite tiny but it's nice at least i got to color in her artwork and yeah I eventually color more pages um in her book in in this book but yeah that's mermaid special and that's all my coloring heavens and then i have one christine karen book now i got this this year so the first amazon paper book again that i attempted to try since 2020 um and i've only colored in this one page but i did enjoy coloring on this premium quality paper it was it was fine it worked fine i actually used my faber castell arbitrary pencils for the background activated with water uh which was perfect which worked perfectly fine but obviously it's been a couple of years since i've been coloring and i've learned and i only ever use those pencils so i have learned the pencils uh, how to use them and how they work so that could be also the reason why I, I was able to work with it on this paper, I don't know. But yeah, I liked using them. And then um, I'm trying to think if I did any basing. I think I just used pencils on this page. I'm not sure about the hair. But I remember doing this, I think, for a colour along again. Probably at normal colourings. Um, orange hair or something like that. Um, and I really like how this um, see-through transparent clothing turned out but i did get the inspiration from the original artwork by christine karen for that um but yeah really like this and i haven't managed to get around like i said i don't gravitate towards portraits that much so i haven't colored in any of the other pages yet but i remember enjoying this one so much so hopefully i'll come back to this book soon so that's fairy and fantasy by christine karen <clears throat> not long now i only have three books left so then I have this book now. I bought this book because of the, you know, I, I think I saw it on some channels and I liked the artwork. Yes, it is a bit Zen doodly. So I do struggle sometimes to see what to color. But the paper, I, you know, on, on those particular flip throughs, they said the paper was really good. So like I said, I like coloring in good paper. So that's why I got these books to try out. And I thought that if anything, I'll leave them as mindless coloring. And that's what I sort of got the books for, mindless coloring. So you'll see... Um, how mindless the coloring is but anyways i tried out just trying out my pencils and my tombow jewel brush pens here i liked how the paper worked and then the only page in this book i've colored which was mindless coloring for myself and that's why i've never really shared it is this page here where i wasn't really thinking i started doing the leaves for you know for relaxing coloring because i like coloring leaves and then i didn't know what i was doing and i was just trying different combinations of pencils and then I was using, then I got fed up of this page and irritated. But like I told you, I don't usually have whips other than that one in um, um, Lizzie Mary Collins' book, uh, which one? Magical City. I don't really have whips that I just leave abandoned forever. So I just decided to quickly colour it. And I just used Tombow Jewel Brush Pens just quickly to fill in some gaps. And then here I ended up using paint pens just to fill in the gaps. Um, so yeah. That is how mindless this page was for me. Um, that's it. And here I think I tried to use two of the art paint pens and then tried to do shading with pencil to see if it worked, I think. Um, but yeah, so not very proud of that. But my, that's what mindless colouring is sometimes. You just don't want to think. And I think I was very frustrated that, that day or during that period of time or something. And I just didn't really care what pencils were coming into my hand or what pens were coming into my hand and I was just coloring and I just wanted the page done and not left as a whip but this is the other book by oh sorry that was by Ursula Schwab um Gar's Garten Gluck I've not been very good at mentioning the names of the books but hopefully you've seen them on screen 
and it's from the you know the series of top or colorful world books and so the other book i have in that series is walt fluster by again Ur ursula schwab and Again, I bought this for Mindless Colouring, but when I started my first page of Mindless Colouring in this particular book, I actually liked the results. So now I try and do it like proper, like, you know, I, I think a little bit more. Uh, but anyways, this is just um, testing out my mediums. And this is the first page I did in this book. And I really liked how it turned out. And I started it as Mindless Colouring, just doing all the greenery and the, the wood, the, you know, the tree and stuff. And then I was like, I am actually really enjoying colouring on this paper colouring this page and so I ended up trying to put a bit more effort into figuring out the sky I wanted to do and um, yeah I, in the end I really enjoyed colouring this page and I loved the end result. Um, really like how the sky turned out there. I remember putting an effort trying to do those little clouds going over the sun to give a good effect and stuff. Um, yeah, just my Faber Castell Albrecht Dura pencils on this page, but activated with water for basically all the elements and then going over with the pencils dry. Really nice paper. Really enjoy colouring in this in these books when um, I'm not frustrated. <laughs> and then this page I did as well and I loved how it turned out. Um, this one I did use Tombow Dual brush pens for basing. So I based the background, I based the tree trunks. I used different shades of green to base the leaves and the purple and the blues and then I went over and the um, tiger and I went over with the pencils dry. I used very little sh shading for the tiger then. I like how it just pops out, it, you know, amongst all this greenery. And then I used my Arteza watercolour metallic paints for doing the frame um, and some glitter gel pens and I really enjoyed colouring this page um so yeah um oh that page i'll leave for my completed pages video because that will be out soon as well so that's world fluster by ursula schwab and last book i have to show you now sorry it's been so long i didn't realize that it would be that long um this is tomislav tomic stroman manga i have got sprooks just boss as well but i haven't colored in it yet it's a very recent book um or i just yeah i just received it a couple of months ago this is my most recent work in this book i did this in september and i absolutely love doing this i did this as a buddy color with bubble of coloring um and i really enjoyed it um i took my sweet time with it we both did um we did it over two months or something like that and um yeah i like the end result i remember using tombow jaw brush pens for basing a lot of the elements and then using my pencils over the top i use glitter gel pens um but yeah i think a lot of the elements i use my tombow jaw brush pens and then my pencils um albert jaw pencils dry over the top then I have this page, which I was really happy with. Now I take my sweet time in Thomas Laptomic's books. I really love his artwork. And um, I just love um, taking my time with them to make sure I do the pages justice. And so I really remember loving this page as well. Again, taking my sweet time. I did the background with Faber-Castell Albert Jura pencils, activated with water. Then I went over the top with the pencils dry. I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing um, all the flowers and the leaves, um, all these pink and yellow flowers and the leaves. And then I went over with the pencils dry. And I used my Faber Castell Albert Jura pencils activated with water for the mushroom houses. And then I went over with them dry. Really, really liked how this page turned out. Um, I used the, again, activated the Albert Jura pencils for the groundwork and added a bit of green to it. And yeah, I don't come to this book that often because it takes me a long time to do the pages. Um, but when I do colour a page in Thomas Latomic's books, I like to take my time, I take it slow. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoy it. The paper is amazing. And so I, I just really like the whole process of colouring in these books. Um, and then hopefully the end result as well would mimic that. This was probably the first page I think I did in this book. Um, early in my colouring journey, so November 2020. 
surprising I'd picked this book that early in my coloring journey but I remember using distress ink just for the outside of the paper and then I used my Albrecht Jura pencils activated with water for the water he effect here for the stones and the moss and then I went over with the pencils dry and I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing the leaves and the clothing and then I went over with the pencils dry. Um, the, the background is, is just with my favorite castile Albert Drew pencils, but I didn't activate it with water, I don't think. I just used the pencils dry for some reason. Um, but yeah, that was my first page, I think, in this book. And then this. Okay, so I did this page first. I didn't do them together. That would be way too much um, for me in one go. But I did this page first. Um... And then I think three or four months later, I did that page, but I kept my color palette because I knew I wanted to, obviously it looks like it, you could do it as sep two separate pages because they're a little bit different, but some of the work, like the tree trunk, the leaves are sort of um, the same on that side and it does sort of uh, continue on that page. So it is like a double page spread, but it could work as single pages as well. But I decided to save the colors from this page to reuse on that page for the background and the leaves and stuff. So yeah, I did this page first and I love how it turned out. I love her vibrant red dress and I love how the, the color I've chosen for her cape, how it looks, it looks a little bit velvety to me. I don't know how I did that. I don't know what makes it look velvety. It was a fluke, <laughs> but I like how it looks. Um, I remember looking, trying to look up the animals to see if I could make them. So I think I researched impala or gazelles um, because that's what they reminded me of from like Kenya. And so I do remember looking them up um, to try and uh, mimic that, that, make it a little bit more realistic. I know my fur work is not that realistic, but at least the colors I could try and mimic. Um, so yeah, I really li remember liking doing that page, but it took me forever. And yeah, I used my Faber Castell Albert Dura pencils for both pages for the background activated with water. And I used my Tombow Draw brush pens for basing all the leaves and then going over with the pencils dry. And I think for the clothing, I used the pencils activated with water and then I went over with the pencils dry to give that effect. And then this page, again, background and everything was kept the same. And then I used my uh, again, Tombow Jewel brush pens for certain bits. Um, and then I went over with the pencils dry. And then, I, like I said, I'm, I, I'm not very good at making fur look realistic. So I didn't try and make the line look too realistic. I just didn't, I didn't do fur work, basically. I just shaded it in. But I'm happy with how it turned out. And I'm happy looking at the whole double page spread done. Because I think it'll be quite a while before I choose to do another double page spread in... Um, a Thomas Tonic book. And this is the last page for this video. Sorry it's been so long. Um, and it's this page here by um, this little dragon. And I absolutely loved doing this page. And at first I remember being quite worried because I did the background first and I used new color twos for the background. And I thought, oh, the colors are too pastel toned for the kind of colors I'm going to end up doing um, for the foreground. I knew I wanted to do a blue dragon. And once I started laying down the colors and looking at this end result, it's so different for me in terms of the color choice for the background and then what the foreground looks like. I really, really like it. I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing the dragon. I can't really... Uh, did I base the cherries as well with them? And then I went over with the pencil. There's a color along, I think, on this page. I'm trying to think. I think there might be a color along for this page on the channel can't remember my memory so I, I mean I can't believe my memory is so bad um because it's just it's not even been a year I've had the channel but I think there's a color along for this um page on the channel so check it out um because I can't really remember I know I used Tombow Jewel brush pens on this page I know I used my Faber Castell Arbor Jura pencils activated with water in certain areas and pencils dry but I can't remember where I laid them out uh, in those sort of instances I think I remember using Tombow Jewel brush pens for the 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 bark and then going over with the pencils dry. I use glitter jar pens. I like that I made the leaves look see-through. Um, yeah, I remember going for a different color for the fairy so that she doesn't completely disappear because she was so tiny. Um, but I loved doing this page. So yeah, 
that's the last page I have to show you for this particular video. And I'm so sorry it took so long. Um, but those are all my completed coloring pages uh, since I started coloring. And I hope you liked watching them. And now um, I've caught you up on everything I've ever colored. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching the video and I'll be back with you guys very soon, probably with my end of month uh, coloring pages um, in the next few days. Um, so you can see, because I haven't shared any of my December pages on this video with you guys. Um, so I'll be back with you for that in a few days time. So until then, take care. Hope you guys had a lovely Christmas um, and wish you a very happy new year. And I'll be back with you soon.